is cracking your back bad for you? My name's Simon from Hogan and Mitchell and in this video, I'm gonna be answering that question for you. Check it out. Hey there, Simon here from Hogan and Mitchell. So, is cracking your back bad for you? So first of all, what is that cracking sound? As in, what cracks? So, I've got a little friend here, my friend is Brian, and we're going to look at something called a facet joint. So a facet joint is where one bone meets the other. If I zoom in, this, oh, let's do a high one. This is a facet joint. And the joint is supposed to move. Now, in the lower back, in the lumbar spine, the main movement is bending forwards and arching backwards. There's a very small degree of rotation, but the main movement is bending forwards and backwards. And your joint should be able to achieve all of those movements. Now, you have something called the joint capsule. That's the joint tissue around it. And what should happen is that's nice and mobile and free and allows the joint to move fully. Now, here's the trick. If, for whatever reason, that joint has not been allowed to be moved, and it's normally because something around, in terms of the muscle around the area has not allowed it to move, then what can happen when you make that joint move suddenly is it makes a crack or a pop. So most people recognize or have had a crack or a pop in the knee or the finger or their ankle, something in their joint has popped or made a cracking sound. And really the theory around it, no one actually knows, the theory around it is that it's some fluid or some very small gas bubbles within the joint making a sudden movement and it makes a pop sound. So the cracking noise is ultimately the joint moving uh, in the sense of is that bad for you? No, joints love movement so that's really good for your joints. But the question to ask is why does it want to crack? So our bodies love movement. We like bending and stretching and our spine especially should be really mobile. Now modern day life often means that in terms of a sitting or standing, we're doing things for a very prolonged period of time. And sometimes we don't bend and twist our backs enough. So that is one possible reason, is that you're not moving your back around enough to get its full range of movement. You're holding yourself in stiff, prolonged positions and when you finally move, it might make a crack or a pop sound because you finally got it moving again. One of the other reasons that your back can crack is if you've done too much exercise within an area and you cause your back to kind of tighten or seize up. So let's say you've been to the gym, you've done a load of exercise on your back and you wake up in the morning you're getting feeling like you're going to be hit by a bus and then what might happen when you finally kind of get moving is that it makes a cracking sound. Now sometimes people need to move and kind of use some leverage like rolling their knees around or their arms around to get it to crack. And that's absolutely fine. And for the vast majority of people, there is nothing wrong with you cracking your back. Now there are two groups of people who really, we, I would recommend never get their back cracked, either by a professional, if you like, whether that be a physiotherapist, osteopath, chiropractor, whoever you go and see. So there is two groups, and those two groups are people with osteoporosis. Now osteoporosis is people who have a reduced bone density, and they tend to be older, or they may have some other medical condition which has led to osteoporosis. And the other group of people is teenagers, so kids. So we do not recommend that you go and get your back cracked, and the reason why is that your spine is still developing, and it really shouldn't need anyone to forcibly crack and move your joints. Now, onto the cracking. So, should you go and see someone to get your back cracked? Well, I personally have got nothing against it, but it should only take one session. And if we really push it, it should maybe take two sessions to get that joint moving. But basically, once you've manipulated a joint and you've got it moving, all you need to do is keep it moving. So if you keep going back and you keep having to have your joint cracked again, and again, and again, and again, and again, and, again, and you keep on having to get it cracked again and again, then something is amiss. It doesn't mean something is badly wrong, it just means that you're not getting given the full picture. So, might I use manipulation? Yeah, occasionally I'm gonna use manipulation. And I'm gonna use it to try and get someone who's had a painful joint to encourage them to get it moving. But as soon as it's manipulated and it's kind of got it moving and freed up, then what should happen is I'm gonna give them some exercise, I'm gonna give them some things to do and to try and keep that joint supple so it doesn't stiffen up again and become 
feeling like he wants to crack again. Some professionals, I'm not saying any names, would have you believe that cracking your back is the cure to all man's ills. And there's a certain, there's a certain hit to it, a certain high that some people get by cracking your back. All right, and some people go, oh, it feels amazing. And it's been proven that if you do crack your back, that for a very short space of time, it does make your muscles go really loose. And that's kind of why it, it can be really useful. But, is cracking your back gonna cure all back pain? Hell no, it does not cure all back pain. It's gonna cure some people's back pain, but if we take back pain as an overall thing, is it gonna cure all back pain? The answer is no. That has been proven outright. Science, fact. So I'm gonna give you a little story now. This is a lady I met two weeks ago, and she had been seeing uh, another therapist, so not a physical therapist, and she had been having manipulation twice a week for about the previous six weeks. Now, it helped her in the first two weeks. I mean, that's brilliant, absolutely great, exactly what she wanted. But then, her pain had stayed the same, but the practitioner kept on manipulating her back again and again and again. And she'd come to realize that actually, it wasn't getting any better. And she'd come to question, why is it that she, the woman kept on trying to crack her back? Now, the thing that the woman recommended to her is that she needed to come for another three months, once a week, to keep up that manipulation. Now, I see spines for a living. I see chronic spines. I see brand new back pains. I see everything. And what I can tell you is, is that no one needs their back cracking twice a week for three months. That is craziness. Absolutely crazy. Could it be used at the beginning of someone's care, if appropriate, to crack your back and move your joints and encourage you to get a move for a couple of sessions, 100%. Brilliant, go for it if that's the type of back problem that you have. But after that, you should be having exercise, you should be having habit changes, and you might have other lifestyle things like working on your sleep, your stress levels, and all the other things that can influence someone's back pain. So if you are that person and you've had your back cracked, and you go, oh, that feels lovely, but then you keep on feeling like you need it cracked, you need to find an alternative solution because it's obviously not working. No one needs their back cracking for life. So, find someone who's gonna give you some exercises, check out maybe some of our videos and start to move your back often, start to wriggle when you're sitting if you have to hold prolonged postures with your work and you should find that, hey presto, your back stops needing to be cracked. Oh! One last bit. Anybody who is hypermobile, so those are people who were born bendy and their joints move more than the average person, so your joint is the same, but your soft tissues are a bit more supple, we don't recommend that you get your back crack frequently either. And the reason why is that you already got loads of movement. And the issue is probably actually your surrounding musculature. And you need to make it not more supple, but better in its strength endurance to work on your strength capacity to work over long periods of time. And also, last tip, I'll shut up after this, the last tip I want to give you is that you should work on reducing some of your stress levels if you keep on finding you need to get it cracked and you're hypermobile. So work on your relaxation, try to get some better strength endurance, and that might be your magic recipe for getting better. So, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, like or comment below. You can ask us any questions and we'll get back to you. And do a favor for me, just click this button over here and click subscribe. Thanks for watching, I'll see you soon.